Hey, this is John out of Wausau, Wisconsin. You're watching Trucking with Josh on TJV. Stay tuned. Good morning from behind this bug splattered windshield. Good day. We're just beginning ours. We're in Hope, British Columbia. We have about an hour and a half or so into Surrey, British Columbia, closer to the Pacific Ocean. We're pretty much right, right in the ocean, almost. For me being from, uh, I guess Americans might call the Canadian Midwest. Canadian, we just call it the prairies. I'm from Manitoba. I feel like I'm really close to the ocean right now. With some really good scenery. And we got two drops in Surrey, one pickup, and then we're headed back home. As soon as uh, this parade leaves the parking lot. Anytime now. There you go, you found the road. Good for you. Got my coffee. Got a breakfast croissant. I'm excited. It's going to be a good day. Beautiful day to be out here. Then again, it's almost always a beautiful day here. Besides the winter time, well, winter time it just rains a lot. They don't really get snow here, very rarely. Everything shuts down here when they get snow, sort of like the southern US. They're not used to it here. And there are even palm trees in this part of Canada. There are. You have to look real close for them. Not very many of them, but. I know that the Surrey RCMP Police Department has palm trees in front of their detachment. I've seen them. Actually, I think we're going close to it there again today. I don't exactly remember where the police detachment is, but I remember I delivered across the street from it once, and there was real palm trees out in front of the building. I took a picture. Still have it somewhere. It's a very special moment. Palm trees in Canada. The only place you'll find them. And they definitely don't grow here naturally, but they do grow here. Oh, there's a Ferrari. Look at that red car off to the left. Oh, the taxi's gonna hide it from view. Come on. That was a brand new Ferrari. Diesel, do you see that? Yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice. It was very nice. The car was probably worth half as much as my house, if not more. I am looking forward to a shower. Oh, it's going to be glorious. Oh, is it hot out here? Wow, what's the temperature say on my truck here right now? It says oh, plus 32 Celsius. Oh, it's been hotter, but I just spent two and a half hours outside. See my tan line? See that? You see, that's why I wear sleeveless shirts in summer. Otherwise, that tan line up here would have been down here and it would have looked ridiculous like I was wearing a white t-shirt. Now it just looks like I'm wearing a, a white shirt, other shirt. I wish I could go bareback everywhere, but you know, rules and policies. Don't want to scare people away. Don't want to make everybody jealous. Right, Diesel? 
No comment? So I'm just leaving Surrey, BC right now. Uh, I spent two and a half hours outside because I unloaded my freight first and then right where I got unloaded, I got reloaded with metal crates that we haul, that we carry our glass in. I'll show it to you once I stop. I have uh, 36, uh, 12, 24, 30, 30 crates on me. Just empty steel crates and they're going back to Minnesota. But I'm going home for the weekend first and then I'm delivering these into Owatonna, Minnesota on Tuesday. So I'm going to go home and uh, have Father's Day at home. Dad's trying to get home too. I hope he does. I mean, it wouldn't be Father's Day without Dad being there. But if he doesn't, well, then we'll just reschedule. I mean, that's trucking. But either way, I'm going to go home for the weekend. I'll be home on Friday sometime, probably in the evening. And leaving Monday morning. I'm not sure what day of the week you're watching this on, but I'm filming this on a Wednesday. So we have today, Thursday, and the rest of Friday to get home, and it's 2,301 kilometers from this exact point where we are right now. So approximately 23 hours of drive. I could do it in two days, two long days. I mean, I still have nine hours and 50 minutes available to me to drive, but I've got to stop for a shower yet, and I don't want to drive super late. So we'll get pretty far, maybe through the mountains today, pretty close to it, at least up to Golden maybe, I don't know. And then from there it'll be two short days, or maybe I'll do a long day tomorrow and a short day Friday, I don't know. We'll just go with the flow, how's that sound? Maybe somewhere in there we'll actually get a chance to wash our windshield for once, eh? How about that? That'll make you guys excited. No more bugs in front of you. It'll only last about 10 minutes, but hey. That little orange go-kart looking thing up there, that's a McLaren. That thing is worth more than my house. Just rolling down the road. Yikes, I bet you an oil change on that thing costs more than my pickup. Where are you going, buddy? Come back here. Wow. I saw a Ferrari today and a McLaren. Not surprising though, in the Vancouver area here in this lower mainland, there's a lot of very rich people. You have to be very rich to, to live here. So unless if you're living in like a little apartment or tiny little home, if you got a decent sized home and some land, man, you are, you probably have a Ferrari too, or a McLaren, maybe a Lamborghini. I'd have a Lamborghini if I was in their position. I really like Lamborghinis. It's just, you know, the fact that once you have one, it's $20,000 for an oil change or more. I think it's even more than that on some of them. It, uh, it sort of adds up after a while. Like a little Mazda protege like that red one right there starts looking a little more attractive, you know? Less than a hundred bucks for an oil change compared to a few tens of thousands. But still, if I had, if I was just rolling in it, had tons of money, like left over and stuff, nothing else to do with it. In my fantasies, in my dreams, I would definitely have a Lamborghini. All right, we stopped here in Chilliwack to give you a look at the, the load here. So these are those racks. No tarp required on the way back. So each row here, one, two, three, four rows, each row has six racks, three on this side, three on that side. I went overboard on the straps like I usually do. Two over the top, one over the center, two through the bottom. So five per row. Didn't need nearly that much, but... Okay, who's got the backup beeper? Shame. 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 The beeper of shame. That's what we're gonna call it. The beeper of shame. I got all these tarps back here, right? Because I have these other guys' tarps here, and then I got my tarps back here. I got them separated like this so that when I get to the yard, it's easy to tell them apart. And I got them under separate straps, so I don't have to unstrap them all. These guys here. What's with the backup beepers? None of that stuff allowed here. I love Chilliwack. I think I told you that yesterday. If I ever moved to the lower mainland BC, if Britt and I ever like decided to come here, for some odd reason, if we wanted to be taxed to death even more than we already are, uh, I would probably, you know, try to convince Britt to sort of move into the Chilliwack area, maybe a little outside of town, into the mountains there, if we could afford it. Who knows what we could afford here, though? I mean, the taxes alone will bankrupt you. 
gas is a dollar thirty-two nine here, and that's actually cheap. Closer to the city, it was higher than that. It's crazy. Diesel. BC is expensive, and nobody seems to know why. I know why. I know why. Stop voting in people that are gonna make it expensive. It's simple as that. But they keep voting them back in, so I guess that's what the people here want. That's why we don't live here. That's not what we want. What an absolute hassle this has been. This is one kerfluffle of an intersection interchange thinger. Wow. Apparently, I've already been driving for seven minutes. I think I've made it about seven meters. Okay, buddy, green light, let's go. I think we can actually get onto the highway now. Seven, it had to be more than seven minutes. It felt more like seven hours. All right, there we go. Look at this. Oh, freedom. Trans Canada eastbound. Once again, so we just stopped to check our load, check our straps. I wanted to show you the freight too, and now we're gonna go to Hope, BC. We're gonna grab a shower at their Flying J there. And then uh, in eight hours and 26 minutes, I have to shut down before then. Before eight hours and 26 minutes, that's the end of my 16 hour day. According to my hours of service here in Canada. Drive 48 kilometers on one. So that is what? It's three o'clock now Pacific time. That's five o'clock central time at home. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 1, 30. Oh, I don't want to drive that late anyway, but I can drive till 1.30 Central Time, which is 11.30 Pacific. But we'll be in Mountain Time by the time we go to bed, so it'll be 12.30. There you go. And we're back at our home from last night once again. This is where we slept. I'm gonna grab some fuel, actually, before I go in and shower. So that that's out of the way. I want to just put a little bit in here because I don't like fueling a lot in BC because it's way too expensive. But I want to make sure I have enough to get through to where I need to refuel in Alberta. And I don't like to cut it too close, you know, you never know if the highway will be closed for a couple of days or not. And you just want to make sure you have enough fuel. Hey, that car hauler's in my spot. How dare he or she? How dare they? Dollar thirty four nine. Nice to have a shower. I smell great, if I say so. I use this Squatch soap. You guys ever heard of this stuff? I actually have one right here. It's Dr. Squatch. This is the Bay Rum uh, scent, but I'm using the Pine Tar scent right now. Oh, I sort of want to sleep with it under my pillow, but that'd be weird. This Bay Rum smells so good too. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but uh, go on YouTube and look up their ads. Their, their, their ad popped up on one of the videos I was watching on YouTube once, and it's actually just a YouTube video. Go on like YouTube Dr. Squatch if you have time after this video. Dr. Squatch, like Sasquatch. And look at their soap commercials, hilarious. That's why I ended up buying my first bar of soap from them, right? It's soap for men. All kinds of men's products. <laughs> so funny. So funny. So they made me laugh and they won my business. And now I buy all my soap from them. <laughs> Who would have known that Josh would care about where his soap comes from? But it's all natural. It's all natural soap. So it's pretty cool. It's from the Pacific Northwest of the US. You can get them on Amazon. This is where I got mine. The first time I ordered it, I got it right off their website, but I searched for it on Amazon after that. They'll ship it right to you from there. Not bad prices. I think it's a little more expensive than regular soap, but watch their commercials. They're hilarious.
like I thought I cleaned my windshield off and not even what 30 miles down the road it's all full of bugs again what can you do better than snow so I think I'm gonna try to get to Revelstoke BC tonight I can't quite make it to Golden on my hours I have two hours and 56 minutes left of drive time Revelstoke is about two hours from here Golden is about three and a half half an hour short to get to Golden. Revelstoke, there's not a lot of parking except for that big open gravel lot on the west side of town. I'm hoping that they didn't block it off because it seems like almost like a lot of truck stops along this route, even in Northern Ontario too, they're, they're closing down. It's these big, huge companies that are coming in from the US like Flying J and stuff that are uh, and killing all the local businesses up here and there's a lot of truck stops that we rely on to park for the night and for some reason well when they close their businesses they also block off their parking lot so that trucks can't use it so we're losing a lot of parking now don't get me wrong i like flying j i just wish that if they're gonna come in to canada i wish that they would just come in completely already you know just build new travel plazas everywhere like we need a couple between the lower mainland of bc along the trans canada between uh, vancouver and calgary we need at least three along there somewhere we need more through northern ontario i mean they're coming in anyways and a lot of these other smaller truck stops are going out of business but we still need places to park So uh, the Sycamus Husky was blocked off again when I was on my way into Vancouver. Noticed that they closed that one down. That one might just be down for renovations. Looked like they were redoing the lot. So that one might reopen. But we won't be able to park there tonight because that's where I'd like to stop. So if I can't stop in Sycamus, that means that the only place I could stop from Kamloops on going east would be, or the next place I could stop is Revelstoke. So I have to make it there at least. You can't just park these big rigs anywhere. People get very mad at you right away and tell you to move. And some places, you know, you, you just don't want to park in a back alley, a dark back alley either, even though, you know, it's a pretty safe area of the country. Like off to the left here, you could park in one of those, but well, you could fit three trucks in there, tops. <laughs> Where's the other 200 gonna park? <laughs> it's always about parking. You know, in the US too, especially on the East Coast. Man, is it hard to find parking. It's just part of the job, I guess. Just start earlier and end earlier. I've always driven right past this rest area and always been like, hey, I should remember that this is here. I might need to park here someday. It's just west of Revelstoke. Then I don't have to park in that big gravel parking lot. What do you know? Today I remembered. Look at this, it's an actual rest area. Wow. With actual parking spots. I just gotta go around and then come in beside one of these guys, I guess. Huh, interesting. Can I get around the, look at this. Do they even have toilets here? I think they even have flushing toilets. Look at that. I'm going to have to go inside and check this out. Got a little dog walking area. Nice little building there. Some kind of historical signs. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so this guy's a reefer. What does that say there? I think it says bus lane only. Yes, bus lane only. Okay, so that's for buses. This guy's parked in a bus lane. Are these all for buses? That guy's got a reefer anyways. Well, you can't have them all. Okay, these are for trucks over here. Of course, the trucks get the spots way at the back. <laughs> there we go. This'll work. Wunderbar. Park right here. We got a train right next door to us too. 
nice. What is this place? Look at this. It's a garbage can. That's hilarious. This is the last spike. A nebulous dream was a reality. An iron ribbon. Uh, an iron ribbon crossed Canada from sea to sea, often following the footsteps of early explorers. Nearly 3,000 miles of steel rail pushed across vast prairies, cleft lofty mountain passes, twisted through canyons, bridged a thousand streams. Here, on November 7th, 1885, a plain iron spike welded east to west. So this is where the last spike was laid. And the railway reached from coast to coast. That's pretty cool. Oh, and there's like a little memorial over there. There's a little old caboose. Cool. Might have to go check that out in the morning. Look at this. I think they might even have flushing toilets in here. Wow. They got plumbing. If you're wondering why I'm so surprised, the majority of rest areas in Western Canada do not have plumbing. They're just a building around an outhouse, a hole in the ground, or you can just say it's like a hole in the ground with a building built around it, a rickety building with hardly any venting and no plumbing. Maybe sometimes they offer you some hand sanitizer. Sometimes. Depending if you get one of the good ones or not. But anyways, we're gonna go check that out in the morning. Hopefully I'll remember. That's the little memorial, little museum. I don't know what that is there. I'm gonna go see what that is in the morning. Mosquitoes are absolutely nuts here right now. I'm getting back in the truck. Hopefully no mosquitoes will follow me in. See you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. See you later. Hey, this is Rob from the YouTube channel, Rob Motive. Coming at you from the sunny state of Texas, USA. And you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs.